Night Off Fibers, a knitting podcast. My name is Rachel. You can find me on Instagram, temporarily on Etsy, soon to be on my own website, but she'll be in the show notes linked down below. And you can find me on Ravelry Sweet Nuts 1997. And this is Brenda. And you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Night Owl Fibers Mom. So thank you to all returning and new viewers. Um, please like and subscribe and the, don't forget to hit the bell button so you get notifications on when we have a new podcast up. Definitely, because we are very entertaining. <laughs> we like and, to think so. Anyway, um, I guess we'll start with works in progress. Okay. Um, my name's on the notes first, mm -hmm. so I guess I'll go. <laughs> um, I'm so prepared. Anyway... If you hear uh, something, it's just the two little poodles in the room making themselves known that they're here and not getting attention, so I apologize for that. Anyway, I am still working on my Grinchmas socks. I am working on the first one. I have the black yarn pulled out for the heel because I think that will look the best. That'll look really nice. And I think I was at the yellow stripe last time I showed it. So I think these are going to get some love before the new year, and um, hopefully a second one will be on its way soon. You should make a goal to get it done before the stroke of midnight, before the new year starts. Mm, that might keep me up late. It might, but you might get it done. I'm always up late. There's no problem <laughs> with that. <laughs> anyway, um, it's a 60 stitch count sock, and... That's about all I can say other than the colorway is Grinch Best from Night Owl Fibers on the Sparkle Base. <laughs> 2.25 millimeter needles. And that is my spiel. Abby wants to come say hi. She knocked your sock down. I know. There we go. This is your okay. baby. Yep. Okay. I am working on my Arnie and Carlos Perfect Christmas colorway. And I was... Here the last time we podcast, a little stitch marker on from Magpie Wishes that came in the mail. Um, so last night I went from here down to here. I was doing these on Knit Pro Zing's double point needles, but it was a slog. I just, I've tried before in the past and DPNs just are not my thing. I'm a magic looper girl, so um, yeah, switch to um, Cirques last night and went from here to here, marked for my So how did you avoid heel. the green chunk of yarn that was supposed to be for the heel? What I did is when I got to the green, I marked, I just kept going with the green until I had both um, safety lines in and then I cut and I wound off and it was this itty bitty little ball. Mm -hmm. which is very tiny. I don't think this is going to be enough for my afterthought heel, but um, as you can see, there is plenty of yarn and plenty of green right here that I think I'll be able to do the toe and the heel with that. If not, I may just pop in a gray heel. That would be nice. I think a gray heel would look really pretty because there's a it, lot of gray in here. It would pick up the cooler tones of the yarn. It would. It would. Yeah. So... And yeah, a gray heel and then maybe the green toe. I think would look really pretty. Yeah, and thank you to uh, the person who commented about their uh, method of using the perfect yes. yarn. That helped. It did. It really helped give me the confidence just to do my own thing and make it my own and it'll work out. Yeah. So thank you. And also thank you to everyone who wished us a Merry Christmas and sent yep. Christmas cards. Through Instagram. And, and through the mail. Yep. It, you really made our year. Definitely. It was very sweet. Anyway. So, okay, so, so you are on to your next I am work in progress. My next and my last work in progress. A well, not things, your last. Well, but the last one that I'm going to be talking about because it didn't get much work on. Yeah. Too many things over this past week. Okay, puppy needs to go down. Yeah, she's... Uh, okay, it's a little bit of an oversized bag, but the bag I sewed this past year is housing my Playdate by Tin Can Knits, which is the size, and clearly I'm not knitting a baby sweater. But anyway, I got a lot of work done on this. Oh my goodness, you picked that up and you just 
It was got in just zone. like a therapy knit. I just kept knitting on it. So here is the entire body of the sweater. And here is the marker where I was last time I showed it to you. Ooh, and, to uh huh. And so I knit the entire um, body of it to the underarm and then I separated for the right front, left front, back. And then I three needle bound off the shoulders because I think that's sturdier than kitchenering. The pattern gave two options and I always choose to three needle bind off. Um, I do like that bind off. That is and a nice bind I've off. knit about that much on the sleeve. Um, I'm really excited to wear this and have a new cardigan for the new year because my other play date's getting well loved. Um, you need to depill it. I do, yeah. But I'm lazy that way. <laughs> I picked up for both <laughs> sleeves, so that way I know that it's um, evenly picked up for both sleeves and I don't have to remember how many do I do on the right front of the sleeve and yada yada. Anyway, I was alternating skeins throughout and I um, had two balls when I was ready to start for the sleeves. And I divided those two balls in half and then swapped them so that it will still be alternating. That was probably very confusing how I just described that. <laughs> but if you're you alternating followed, skeins. I'm still alternating skeins is the outcome of that. So will you use the helixel for the sleeves? I haven't been because I've just been alternating every row and I don't notice a jog. Well, you were doing um, flat before. Yeah. Now you'll be knitting in the round. And you could try yeah, it. Yeah, I could try it, but I think my next um, sweater slash top project is knit um, top down, so I'll be practicing it on that. For this okay. one, I just want to um, finish it because I know the this method. I don't want to practice a new method on something I just want finished. You just want to knit. I just want to knit. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know if I'm going to put buttons on it. Like the collar band um, has for buttonholes and buttons, but the buttons weigh down one side of it since it's such a light fabric. Mm. So the buttons I had picked out, I would either have to pick new buttons that are lighter or just not do buttons at all. Yeah. The other one I probably only button maybe 5% of the time that I wear it, not I even. Not. So are buttons really worth it if they're going to weigh down one half of the cardigan? Buttons are expensive too, mm. unless you have a stash on hand or... Yeah. They, so, they do get pricey. That's one thing that I'll figure out when I get there. I'll probably just be knitting really late at night and then realize, oh, I'm ready to do the button band. And I haven't picked out buttons. No buttons. Yeah. That's yeah. generally how things go with me. Knitting late at night. Oh, definitely. Definitely you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. And now you're up. What else are you working on? The only other thing that I've been actively working on is my So Faded by Andrea Mowry. Yeah. And I believe, you want to hold that side please? Absolutely. I think I was here the last time we podcast and so I got through the rest of Dementor by itself down to this little marker and then I started fading, no, that was the two colors. This is Dementor by itself and now I am fading in the chosen one. So right down here and I am using the mm -hmm. helixel method that Grace from Traveling, Grace's Babbles Traveling Yarn suggested. So I am working with these two colors at the moment. Those are really pretty. Then I will go to, I don't have it ex easily accessible, but it's, it's less of the lighter and more of the darker. So it'll go back to a... It'll start fading into to the a dark darker again, tones. The darker tone again. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do short sleeves. You know, just do a little bit of... Maybe regular like stocking an neck inch stitch and then. and then some ribbing because of living in Houston it's always hot and humid we get very few cool days yeah. and I'm at a certain age um, where I tend to run a little warm um, so I'm trying to decide if I want to do full length sleeves or just do short sleeves that I can put a light cardigan or a shawl over it um, so to be determined Regardless, the project is looking great. Thank you. It's so much fun to work on and it's so pretty. Definitely my colors. So so I think... That's all that I've been actively working on. Mm -hmm. 
ditto for me. Um, so we do have finished objects, which are always a positive. There Yay. is no way that I would finish all my works in progress before the new year, though. Me either. No. No. It's just not a goal. <laughs> a, no. 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 Anyway. Um, I will sit down, though, before the first of the year and get my journal, my knitting journal, and mm -hmm. go through some goals of yeah. things that I want to want to do in the next year with my knitting. Of course, learning how to brioche is always on that list, and I have yet to learn to brioche. Uh, I think that there really hasn't been a pattern that's caught your eye. It intimidates me. Okay. I think that's, I just need what to get it over it. To. Yeah, I just need to get over it and do it, and I'll be fine, but yeah. there again, it's a really thick, squishy fabric, and for this climate, you know, mm -hmm. well, I really use it, so. Yeah. Yeah. Things to think about. Yeah. But I definitely know I'll have at least 12 pairs of socks on that list. Yeah. It might be fun to do a bonus video of all the socks you've knit. Ooh. Yeah. Because I've kept them aside in a little pile. And little pile. Or, well, I folded them neatly and stashed them. Not the Rachel pile, where it's just <laughs> a jumble of things. Yeah. Not the Rachel pile. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay, so... Finished objects. Finished objects. I finished my um, God Rest You Mary Hippogriff socks. Those look so good. Um, so the colorway from Teeny Button is God Rest You Mary Hippogriff. I did block these, and I did wear them. Once. Once, and I wore um, just commercial socks, ankle socks over the top, so that it wouldn't get all so gross socks before. had protection. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, so that they'd look nice for the podcast. So the color work's been blocked out. It's really pretty. And I just used a red Westrickshire spinners really um, like heel and color for it. And I had like 50 grams left of the God Rest You Mary Hippogriff. And I wear a women's size 8 US shoe. So I think it was a heavy skein, which is yeah. really awesome. That I have a. Must have been a heavy skein. I have a little chunk to do something with. But the pattern is um, Fair Isle Flower Sock by Candice DeWitt. If you're looking for the free color work thing on Ravelry. Mm. And thing. It's a pattern, not a thing. <laughs> anyway, I really enjoy these. And they turned out awesome. I love those. Those are really so, pretty. Yeah. Anyway, that is finished off the needles, and I'm really excited about that. One pair of that. Christmas socks finished this year. Yep, one pair of Halloween and one pair of Christmas, and I still have one <laughs> pair of Halloween and one pair of Christmas on the needles. Maybe that would be your goal, finish it before eh. the ball drops. No? No. No. Okay. Anyway. Move the show notes so we can stay on topic. Um... I do want to talk really quickly about my pennant board. Um, I just had most of these buttons and pins on my canvas bag, and it was really weighing down the bag, so I just grabbed a piece of felt and some fabric I had stashed and just sewed around, just kind of lay them together, folded over the edges like a present, and sewed around it and put all my pins there. So. Now we can enjoy them and add to them and definitely and was didn't cost me anything because I had everything here at home so all right <clears throat> now back to the show notes <laughs> I finished my Christmas socks um, last time we podcast I was right here where this pretty little heart marker is and basically toe to here was all I had so I finished the leg, of the, the leg of the sock. Did the second sock, and then I put in the contrasting um, red afterthought heels. And yeah. I used the same West Yorkshire spinner that you used for yours. So, um, toe up, 64 stitches, high high sharps, 2.25 millimeter, three colors of ribbing. So, not as tall as most socks, but not shorty socks either. They're kind of a mid, mid calf. So, that is my first finished object. Okay. What else you got? Oh, it's my turn again. <laughs> it is. Um, I have had really cold hands, so I went into our scrap slash 
it didn't turn out kind of yarn pile. And I found this beautiful yarn and made a pair of fingerless mitts. And they did have a thumb gusset and you don't have to make a right and a left. They are reversible, interchangeable. interchangeable. It's Align Mitts, A-L-I-G-N Mitts. And the printer ink was going out, so this is a desired effect. <laughs> it's not an accident, it's desired. Um, and it is by Courtney Spainhauer. Spainhauer. And it'll be in the show notes, which are linked down below if you are looking for any of the patterns, which will be on our Ravelry group. But Come yeah, join the Ravelry group. Definitely. Um, but this is what's left of the yarn. It is Canon hand dyes. And it is the Dragonfly Inn, and the yarn base is 75, no, 70 Superwash Merino, 20 Yak, and 10 Nylon. So it's really soft and buttery, and the stripes really turned out nice on it. And you can see the little bit of the rib panel. And it's Rachel finish, no ends woven in. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have been, I've wore these Two, two or three times without the ends woven in. I tuck the ends in if that helps any, but they will get woven in at one point. Um, I, I think used, we've had that yarn in our stash for at least two years. Yeah. I used, I can't read the notes, I'm all screwed up here. Um, you went down a size. Yeah, I used a two, 2.75 millimeter um, because the pattern calls for a US 3. I knit maybe five rows with a 3, and I really didn't like the gauge I was getting. You're a very loose and, knitter. Um, so I went down to a 2, and then after I got maybe a couple inches knit, I checked my gauge, and the 2s were what I required to get the pattern gauge. So I have a pair of nice fingerless mitts, and I am happy with them. They work really well for um, evenings when I'm reading in my chair. And... I would wear those 24-7 if you could. Probably. Because your hands are always cold. Um, also, I had the leftover scraps from my mom's socks, which were mustache yarn in the Harry Potter house colors. I don't know if that's the actual name of the yarn for house Either colors. Either house cup or house color is one of the two. And I knit my mom fingerless mitts, and I used that solid black to... Um, work the thumb and the top and the difference is the first pair had just a crocheted edge to keep it from rolling but on my mom's I did three rows of ribbing here and then all of the black in ribbing and the ends aren't woven in they were supposed to be a Christmas gift and um, I had them done in time for Christmas I did not weave in the ends and I did not wrap them and so I'll probably weave in the ends soon and give them to her. <laughs> yeah. And my birthday's that, coming up. <laughs> it is, yeah. I might get around to weaving ends by then. Fair anyway. enough. Fair enough. Um, that is my finished objects and I really love the pattern. Um, it's really well written and yeah, you said the other day that that's understand. one of the other things you really like to do with self striping yarn mm -hmm. is make fingerless mitts yeah I mean the striping pattern works out perfectly with it and it highlights the yarn so if you have extra this definitely didn't take a lot of yarn no. so if you wanted to knit a pair of fingerless mitts first with the self striping skein of yarn and then knit a pair of socks you would probably have enough to do both very easily. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an awesome pair and awesome finished objects. Okay, I'm up next. Yep. I am wearing a finished object. This is Paris in Berlin, Paris in Berlin by Hoagie Locatelli. Uh, got this on Ravelry. And it is a bandana cowl. So it is connected in the back. You start out knitting the top portion um, flat and it has pretty textured stitches. I don't know if you can see the texture. Yeah, you can. Right there. There's a little texture. Um, and this highly variegated yarn. I did decide to do the texture because it just made the pattern more interesting. And then you join in the round and continue with these very pretty, um, I think they call them quilt stitches. And you end with garter and 
I think that it took one whole skein of yarn. Um, pearl and ply. It is an 85%. It's their Did soft sock. The soft sock, message in a bottle, 85% super fine merino, 15% nylon. So And it didn't take you long at all to knit it. Um two full days off and on working on it, and then I think I knit I cast on like at nine o'clock at night. Yeah. Um so a little over two days to knit it, and I love it because it doesn't slide off. I don't have to worry about it. You don't have to find um, a mirror and readjust. No, it it's keeps my neck nice and warm. It's it's a nice little accessory. It just mm -hmm. makes a regular t-shirt look a bit look, dressier. Look a bit dressier, yeah. yeah. Um, so I would knit another one. Finding another perfect yarn that goes with everything. Yeah. I think that's what is so great about this pattern. specific pattern and the specific yarn that I chose is there's all the colors in here yeah and it goes with everything beautifully so mm -hmm. I love it yeah okay, okay so what is next on your needles what is next is um, the Burnswick by Olive Knits I have been eyeing this pattern since it came out is that another design feature of the printer yes the printer added a lovely design feature to the picture <laughs> and um, so, you know, we're just she does have pink it. hair though, right? She does have pink hair in the Ravelry photo, the model that <laughs> is um, wearing the top. But I did swatch for it, or in the process of swatching for it in the round. And I like the fabric I'm getting, but it is not the pat the um, gauge that the pattern is requiring so I'm going to have to go down to US 2's to knit the top. Wow. And that's okay. I tend to be a little bit of a looser knitter so I'm just going to see. I might do a few rows of garter and then switch to US 2's and check my gauge again and then if it seems a little off yet I will block it. Um, and do do your clover interchangeables come with a size 2? No, they don't. I'm going to have to use a fixed 2. Oh. But I have a 2 Bummer. that I can use. But I dyed up the yarn. And it's non-repeatable because I was just not paying attention to... You are just playing. I was just playing. Having um, fun. So this is what the color work will be in. And this is what the main body will be in. There are little speckles in there throughout and I think it'll look really nice and be a cozy yeah. top since I get cold yeah. so easily. Um, mm -hmm. Is this a new base to you? It is, yeah. It's your um, tawny owl? Mm -hmm. So it's a hundred percent and it's really squishy Very to knit soft. with. Okay. Alright. So owl post? I do have a little bit of owl post. Um, this is from Magpie Wishes. It came in the mail yesterday. Actually, I'm not doing a very good job of that. She had this wrapped up so pretty. It was wrapped in tissue paper, and then she took a mm -hmm. piece of fabric and tied a bow and had this pretty stitch marker on it. Yeah. Um, it's just packaged so really pretty. Really put thought and care into it. Very much so. Uh -huh. She's on Etsy, and it is a DPN case. Yeah. So we went out to Twisted Yarns in Spring, Texas, and I found Knit Pro Zing's double points. So I got a four, five, six, a one and a half, and then I had two sets of US ones, two point two fives. So all my Knit Pro Zing's are neatly kept in this lovely container, or not container case, case, case. and it's flat. Um, so I won't lose them. I know where all of them are. And she is on Etsy. And the only other thing that I got in the mail was two more sets of Haya Hayas. But I don't think they're the Sharps. Because they have a green cord. And the ones you had before had a blue yeah, cord. Yeah, the ones I have that I normally knit my socks on are blue cords. So mm -hmm. if they're not the Sharps, that's okay. I'm, I'm happy to have another two pairs. That's all I have. What about you? Okay. Did you get any owl post? I got some Addy Sock Rocket Turbos in the mail. They are the 2.25 millimeter 40 inch cord. 
since my other ones are well loved, these will um, probably Very replace well them, and those will become the backup needles in case there's something I can't resist but cast on. For... So you wore off the finish on a couple mm -hmm. pairs. Yeah. I did, yeah. So yeah. extra needles, always a good idea. And then I got a printed copy of the Zweig by Caitlin Hunter. And I really mm. want to use Night Owl Fiber's Moon Dust colorway and then Night Owl Fiber's um, Blue Suede Shoes colorway for the main body, which is a really royal blue. That'll so I think it'll be awesome. And it comes with a download code, so I have the physical copy and I'll have a Ravelry copy. So I can't show the inside because it's paid for, but it is a very pretty top. Everybody knit them a while back so yeah. I'm behind the trend but I don't really care the pattern is just calling my name and knit what you like yeah, yeah. I definitely the all of knits one the Burnswick is going to be knit way before this one I am yeah. so eager to cast that on but so want to talk about our Christmas a little bit I'm sure we had lots of cookies yeah we normally don't make mm -hmm. um we did Pfefferness. We, we did, yeah, which is a, it's a, a German, German cookie. Um, the recipe is my great-great-grandmother's that she brought over from Russia. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, It has anise seed, uh, ground anise seed or anise extract in it, so it's a really licorice strong flavored cookie. My husband mm -hmm. doesn't like them, but you and your sister and I like them. And then yeah. we did, um, you did gingerbread cookies. Yeah, I like doing gingerbread cookies, and I actually did the frosting on yeah. them this time, which hurt my hands so bad. And the frosting bottle was the frosting hard bottle. to... Yeah, but yeah. Um, the gingerbread men went into witness protection. <laughs> I put them in a container, and I brought them to my room. <laughs> we were eating them so fast. Yeah, they went into witness protection so that I would have a few more. Your dad didn't even get a single one of those. Yeah. He was... Yeah. He wasn't home when they were made. They may have never been made. He doesn't know. They were good. And yeah. then, um, what else did we make? Oh, we made my mom's date pinwheel cookies. Mm, those were really good. They, Yeah. In fact, I've got more ingredients to make another batch because we all just inhaled those. And he, my dad hadn't had them in what? 17 years. 17 years because my mom had never made them. Mm -mm. And that was the last time my grandma made them. Yeah. So, yeah, so they're really good cookie. Yeah. Um, but when you have to bake sugar-free, gluten-free, and vegan, it becomes challenging. But luckily they have good egg replacers now that they didn't have many years ago or several years mm -hmm. ago. Um, Bob's Red Mill 1 to 1 flour is absolutely excellent. And then Splenda brown sugar and, oh, yeah, those are good. Yeah. And then your dad and sister worked Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, so it was just basically you and I at home. Yep. Knitting, getting uh, the puppies love. I didn't knit very much. No, over you did. You didn't. I just I don't know. I haven't been feeling too well. Yeah. So But it was a really good Christmas. Really good. We all put on our pajamas when your dad got home from work at ten o'clock and then I actually put my pajamas on <laughs> First thing in the morning, morning. I put on you new changed, pajamas. You changed into your new pajamas. And my dad and my sister were just like, those are for this evening. And I'm like, I'm not going anywhere today. We didn't have a vehicle. No, we didn't. So, yeah. We just kind of um, had a very nice, quiet, relaxed holiday. We didn't have to drive and see any fa other family members. It was just, just the four of us. Very quiet, very nice, very peaceful. Yeah. Um, no family drama. Nope. No rushing here and there. It was very calm and peaceful. So, hi, Abby. She wants to get love. So, okay. okay. Lots of new things coming up and exciting things. Yep. I have been yeah. working on getting the new website up. She is not going to let you put her down. Okay. I've been working on getting the new website up. I've also been creating new self-striping colorways. It's not up yet. It's not up yet. It will be up January 1st. And mm -hmm. I've been getting pictures and listings ready and getting just the format done. But it will be <laughs> www.nightallfibers.com. And I 
We'll start with the single hoots, which are my single ply. I dyed up three new colorways with what I had left on hand. This is Salazar. Um, it has a nice emerald tone to it. It has black and brown speckles. And I have that available on my singles. Then I have Chinese Fireball, which is a lot of orange and gold speckles with this burgundy mm, that's showing up good tone today. and the nice bits of black. And then I have Siren Song right here, which I love. And the speckles right mm, in there. That's pretty. And so, yeah, those are the singles, single hoots. And then my Barn Owl base uh, right here it's a is new base. Straw Flowers and the business cards. It's a new base to me. It's a 7525. And it's a little thicker. 437 yards per 100 grams. This is a six striper. It's a little thicker ply. And it is. It's really nice. I'm going to be casting on one soon. But this is, like I said, straw flower. It has two different shades of yellow, a purple, a pink, and a mauve tone, and then an orange stripe. Um, and then I have Coral Reef, which is a... I think it's a eight, eight striper. striper. It's an eight striper, and it just reminds me of the deep sea, and then the colorful little surprises that are there within the coral. And I definitely know right now I won't be able to remember the stripe sequences, but I did make sure that they were photographed with them in the listings. Um, in the listings. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is that one, and then I know I showed this last time. It's Robin Hood. <laughs> and that one is an eight, no, nine, nine striper. That one may go missing. It may jump <laughs> well, in my bag. There are mar multiples, so. Yeah, that that one, one may jump in my bag. And then again, I don't remember if this one was showing last time or not, but this is hopping with my scotch. So I kind of got the idea of hopscotch and then wall art and then adult beverages, and I kind of mixed them all together <laughs> for the title of this one. It is it's a fun. six striper. Very and bright. Yeah, it's a very bright one. It's a really like if you are having issues with the gloomy weather, this would definitely brighten up your day. Definitely. Um, that's all I have right now for this update for self striping. You have um, for regular listings, but I do have a Harry. Oh. oh yeah, you. Have I talked about that last episode. Okay, so. sorry. Um, I have. A Harry Potter self striping club Yay. coming, and it, the first colorway is a 10 striper, so and pretty. it's really pretty. So pretty. Um, that might actually be the one that I cast on. Um, I'm not quite sure yet if I'm going to leave the club a mystery or when I'm going to start posting pictures of what the colorway is. Let but us know. Do you want it to be a mystery, or would you like to know ahead of time? Yeah, some feedback would be really great, because I am torn, because I want to show off the colorway, but at the same time, if somebody wants it as a mystery, I, yeah. I don't want to ruin any surprise. Um, but Very pretty, it's though. going to be a, you can, it's, you have to sign up for each month, and, um, it's going to have more information on the website. I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> but, I mean, Harry Potter was the first series I was able to read independently as a dyslexic. And so it holds a special place in my heart. And I can't imagine reading the books and not laughing at least once at the little bits of humor that J.K. Rowling has put throughout the books. And, yeah, I'm really excited about it. Okay, yeah. so I think that's it. Yeah, so lots of fun things coming in January. Yep, so please like and subscribe, and thank you for sticking around with us. Bye. Bye.